but got like, a, apparently I have a bowl of Lucky Charms with uh, no mush, no marshmallows left. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So, so at the shore, the this season, a new ice cream place opened up, mm. and it's quickly become our favorite. It's called the Churn House, and they they blend cereal and ice cream together. Dude. Okay, go on. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link to the place. Um, and it looks like they may be open year round, obviously with limited hours in the off season. Cause what they, they have like their pre-made things with like, mm-hmm. you know, fun names. They've got their Halloween themed stuff out now. I can't wait to see what they do like at Christmas time. Cause I'm like, depending upon that, we may, you know, we, we're going to take a ride down anyway and see some of the, the Christmas stuff of the shore. But I'm like, we need to swing by there if they're open just because it's, it's so good. Like, you know, we get like, they, they've got all the different cereals, like everything from like, yeah, you know, I thought of it because they have a Captain, Cr- they have uh Count Chocula, they've got Captain Crunch, Chex, uh, Cocoa Pebbles, Fruity Pebbles, all of them. Mm. And so they take the soft serve, churn it up in this really cool machine, you know? So it, it's, it's, it's like a blizzard, but not, it's, it's mixed up differently. And then they'll, they'll top it with stuff and it is just phenomenal. The last time I was there, I got like soft serve with cocoa pebbles and some Reese's cups on top. He lot took me to this place in San Diego. I think it was called Afters, and they had this flavor of ice cream called cereal milk. Mm-hmm. So it's basically that milk left over in your bowl after all the cereal's gone that is like kind of sweetened and and flavored from the cereal. So that was the ice cream flavor, and then they rolled it in fruity pebbles. And then, and then they served it on a, uh, a glazed donut that was split in half. Oh, now that sounds phenomenal. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> oh, and I've never, I've looked around, like there's so many flavors of ice cream in the store these days. And I'm like, but I can't find anything called cereal milk. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's quickly become our favorite. That's awesome. And then I learned something new this week. Mm. The cra- the crappier the weather, the better I play golf. Oh, really? So Is that you know, you're, when, you're trying to get through the round and you don't have time to overthink it. I think that might be part of it. You know, just trying to trying to finish it. But like went to, to you know, Maryland with with some friends for for a couple of days earlier this week, and um, I, it just it, we always get rain. It's just the time of season, the location, all of it. But uh, we. Um, with the rain we were getting getting on monday at the course we we're playing it's right on the bay like amazing views but just the driving rain the wind i actually played better than i played yesterday mm. in clear sunny conditions and no wind okay. I, I i could i could see that i can get yeah. behind that it, it it was the funniest thing at one point like i just yelled to a buddy of mine i'm just like i've learned a lesson this week <laughs> <laughs> so we need to go out when the weather looks shitty Less enjoyable from a it feels nice perspective, but more enjoyable because you don't want to throw your clubs in the pond at the end of the round perspective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I wish we I wish it was golfing. Well, I'm sure there's lots of people out on the courses. As long as there's oh, no snow, they're the out pe- there. People will get out there. Yeah. It's just cold. Yeah, I once it really starts to get cold, I can't I, I don't play. Like it's just it's it's it. I get you. You just start to stiffen up. You can't swing. I mean, I'm not that hardcore. And, and it's so some, I'm probably done for the season right and now. And it's something with the vibration in the club. And maybe it's because I have this scar from playing uh, little league baseball, where you know we're outside practicing in November with the cold metal bats. And something oh. about if you didn't hold it well enough, and that ball hit the bat and it just vibrated. It just vibrated. And you're, like, nope, nope. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm done with that. It's too cold for that. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'm done for the season. I'll I'll, I'll get the clubs out and I, again next spring. So I'll clean them up and put them away in the garage uh, this weekend. Well, good thing you cleaned out the garage and it's all organized for a nice spot for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Well, do you did you um did you cr- create your own transition this week? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm struggling at the moment to to find a good segue into into our topic for for this episode. Yeah, sometimes you just have to go right at it and not have, not be so cute about the 
Exactly. The segue. Um, so yeah, so l- l- let's get ahead and dig in. Um, so this week I want to talk about the fr- the phrase ride for the brand. Now it's something I heard several years ago and, and it's, it's always struck me as, as interesting. And it comes from, you know, what they call the code of the West or the code of the cowboy. And mm-hmm. so I've been doing some reading on it and it, to, for full disclosure, I don't know how much of it is romanticized versus accurate. Wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised like if it's a combination of the two. Yes, there is a great deal of level of accuracy and you know that this existed, but you know, there might be also people looking back and adding a romantic, you know, rose-colored glasses to it. That being said, you know, having read up on it, accurate or not, romanticized or not, there's actually some really great lessons mm-hmm. in it. Um, some really great things to to live by, and one of the 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 these items as part of this code is the idea of ride for the brand. And in you know some of the things I read, it it, it means to be loyal to those that take you on, hire you, um, but it's not this blind loyalty. It's it, it's one that's that's earned. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, citing one of the lines from the book, Cowboy Ethics, What It Takes to Win at Life by James P. Owen, you know, he states, the cowboy's greatest devotion was to his calling and his way of life. His loyalties naturally centered upon those who valued his traditions and counted upon him to, to uphold him. In short, the cowboy gave allegiance and respect where they were deserved and, and returned. So again, not this idea of just blind, fake, phony loyalty, but like a genuine loyalty that 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 is some way of a, a two way street. Yeah. But you know, this is one of those particular items where we've seen this term used in in company settings. So where I want to start with this is is for you specifically, what does it mean to ride for the brand? in in a corporate setting and uh and before we jump into that did did you know or had you and i talked about the fact that i used um the cowboy code to run my team at uh, my last job before starting 33 sticks we may have talked about that uh quite a while back okay so yeah i mean the it's you know what eight or so items long that if you kind of boil it down to the list of the the code of the West, law of the West, cowboy code goes by different names. Um, I, I use that to run the team that I was um, managing at, at a previous employer. Um, and it, it, it was such a strong model and, and right for the brand was a key piece of that um, and has kind of continued on in how we've built out the culture and expectations uh, here uh, as, as well. And for me, it's, it's a it's a complicated conversation because it's 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 very nuanced and as you as you said it's not blind loyalty um, it and it's also not uh, blind what would I call it cheerleading um, and and so it's it's somewhere in between and you know when we when we have that conversation um, those are the two kind of polar extremes that is important to talk about when we're talking about. Uh, writing for the brand. So does it mean that we always agree? No. Does it mean that we, you know, all think like the leader? No. Does, does it mean, you know, we we don't have our own opinion? No, no, none of those things. To, to me, what it means is that when you write for the brand, it means that you're willing to sign on for the the values uh, of the company that, that, that you're writing for, that you're working for. Um, and to me, that's really the, the core essence of, of what it means. Um, oftentimes I think that gets lost in what businesses expect from employees when they say, you know, and, and of course they're probably not using the, the term right for the brand, but when they expect loyalty from employees, it, it's less about, it's less about getting behind fully the culture and the why you're doing business and more being kind of that vocal cheerleader for the company. And I'm sure you've seen this um, to, just to give some examples. Social media is a great uh, example of where this comes out. 
you, you may be connected to folks on Twitter or LinkedIn that never post, never post anything. And then um, their employer makes an announcement. And then all of a sudden you see them along with 50 other people that work there posting the same exact thing. To me, that's not writing for the brand. To me, that's fake. That's it's disingenuous. It's, it's, it's not authentic, right? For me, writing for the brand is about authenticity. It's not just that you can buy my allegiance and if you pay me, then you're my favorite employer and everything you do is perfect. No, that's not that's not what we're saying when we say write for the brand because that just means that you can be bought. What it means for writing for the brand is that you're you're attracted to an employer where you're deeply committed to the values and purpose for why they are in business. And, and, and really that's what we talk about when we're talking about writing for the brand. Yeah. And I, I think that, that that's a great way of, of putting it because that, that this is, as I was reading up on it. So some of the other items that are part of like, you know, the code of the West, as they call it, um, are, are, are very, very clear and, and understood. You know, the, there's one that's like, you know, a promise made is a promise kept. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I mean, that one is as, as clear as, as can be, but then there's, there's this one, uh, where it's talking about, okay, the, um, you know, when someone, brings you on you're loyal to them well i mean if you're not careful some people can that can be misinterpreted as all right i'm getting a paycheck i'm going to do whatever i'm told that that's not it so it, it's diving deeper into it and really thinking about it it's 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 being loyal to to as you put it um you know like your core beliefs align with the organizations or you know it's being loyal to those that care about the craft that you're in that's right. You know, that you practice. Yeah, that's right. And I think that that's why it's such an important distinction to be from, you know, you should be blindly loyal to the brand that you're writing for too. You should look for a brand where your values and ethics align with the company that you're going to work for. Because if not, then um, you're probably going to put at risk some of the other um, items from the cowboy code. Right. So uh, I think one of them is uh, you have to remember that some things aren't for sale. And, uh, you know, if I'm if 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 I'm just a bot, if I'm just a bot hand uh, and I'm blindly loyal to the organization, then I can justify lots of things. Right. Like I can justify doing all sorts of things in the name of driving more revenue for the company. Um, but am I am I violating one of the other laws, right? Am I violating the ethics of why we do business? And, and so again, again, I think it, it may seem subtle, but it's such a, a huge difference. And, um, I, I don't think it's talked about much and I don't think it's thought about much. Right. And, and again, I, I'm sure we've been there as employees as well. When we think, well, um, you know, if it, whatever employer is paying me, I'm, I'm their biggest fan. Right. And again, it's, it's more, it's more subtle than that. It's more nuanced than that, that it's, you know, we, we don't have to just be a blind cheerleader. And, and in fact, just think about how, how we've done things like internally, we've probably had lots of disagreements over the years, right? It's, it's not mm -hmm. about a hive mind. It's not about, you know, all thinking the same thing. It's bringing our unique experiences, but ultimately grounding that on a shared set of, of values. And, and I think that that's why it's so difficult to get behind that for so many companies and why, why people simply default to saying, hey, I want to be loyal to the brand. I want to ride for the brand. I have no idea what the brand values are. So my loyalty is to be a cheerleader for the brand, right? And, and so I, I often don't blame the employees for trying to do what they think is best to show that they're willing to put the logo on their, their shirt and say, this is who I represent. Um, because a lot of them really don't have anything else to anchor what they do or the decisions they make or the stands that they take on because most businesses haven't really invested the time to help their employees truly understand what their, what their values are. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and we, I don't necessarily want the conversation to, uh, to crumble into a conversation about mission statements and, you know, printing out values and poster, putting them on posters on the wall. 
but we've all been there. We've all had that employer, right? It's like, I remember one of the employers I had every, every break room you go into, it had all the posters on the wall. Like these are our core values. This is what it means. This is how we do business. But it was just, it was just a, it was just a charade, right? Like no one ever talked about why or, or, or how we actually live those values. It was, you know, a group of probably executives sat around with some consultants and said, we have to have this. So let's make these our values. We'll print it up and slap it on the conference room wall. But those aren't values, right? Values are something that you, that you live. And, and I think so many companies just get into business to make revenue, make money. And of course that's critically important. Um, but as we've talked about in lots of episodes and conversations that, uh, and I think Simon Sinek said it, um, he's like, revenue isn't a purpose, it's an outcome. You know, revenue is what happens when you, ha- as an outcome, when you live your purpose. Um, and so if your purpose is, is revenue, then you're really not grounded in, in anything. So I think I'm probably getting far outside the, the bounds of, of writing for the brand, but I think it all plays together. And, and again, the importance of thinking about it from a loyalty standpoint in, in that you're not necessarily loyal to be a subservient subject. You're loyal to the core values of the brand. And that's what makes all the difference. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't think we're getting too far outside of it because I do believe this is a very, a, a very nuanced item because it, 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 it takes a lot of introspection to be honest with yourself on it. So let's go back to your talk about like the, the social media posts. Um, I definitely worked for an organization for, for a little bit where every so often someone would be sending out a notice like we just got nominated for this, or we just got chosen for that. Here's a couple different ways you can share it on your social media feed. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know, with like, I mean, like, you know, with a couple of different pre-written things and I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. You know, not that, w- it, not that I believed it or not. I'm just like, it comes across as phony. It's just not authentic. If you, yeah. Right? It, 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 it's disingenuous for me to post something like, like that. And you've and, seen it, right? You've seen it on social media. Oh, I've media. absolutely seen it. Right. It's like, oh, I see this company had an internal meeting and told all their employees to go post this because you see like 40 or 50 posts on LinkedIn that are all the exact same wording. And it actually, in my mind, it like takes it would be better not to post anything at all in my mind. Like to me, it just takes away from it's like this just is inauthentic. It just doesn't. Feel yeah. Right. I, and, and I'm going to say it, digital marketing agencies are notorious for this. Mm. You know, I, I, I love the ones where it's like, we just got nominated for best place to work <laughs> in East Poughkeepsie. Um, you know, come join us. Here's a link to our open positions. And like, if I know a few people that work for that organization, it's all the same damn thing. And I'm just like, yeah, to your point, someone just sent out a notice or they just had an internal meeting that, you know, everyone's, you know, is told, let's go do it. And, and yeah, it, it, it's doesn't come across as, as phony. And let's also say it as a side note, like a lot of those best places to work or, you know, fastest growing and yada, 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 they're all paid for. Yeah. Did you see the debate I got into on LinkedIn about this? I did not. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I, I got, I didn't think that this would be a topic for debate, but it, there were actually several people that, that wanted to debate me on this subject when I, when I brought it up, cause I did, you know, I brought this up and I said, this is, you know, this isn't writing for the brand. This is, this is not what is intended by, by that messaging. And their stance was that, um, being able to tout this and curating a message that all their employees could share out is critical to being able to attract talent to their company. So it's not fair for me to, to knock it and, and, and really take its value away from it because it has massive value from an employee uh, attraction perspective. Um, and I guess that could be true, but again, you have to ask yourself the question, what type of employee do I want to attract? Do I want to attract an employee that is going to be um, a subservient factory worker that is is just gonna is going to have to take direction from me on everything they do? If yes, yeah, great. This is a great campaign to do that. You know, do you want to attract someone that is looking for 
a different way to do business, a more authentic, humanistic way, this is going to turn that employee off. And, and, you know, we don't think about those things. And I guess, you know, that's kind of the curse we have as analysts is we're always overanalyzing those situations, right? And we can say, okay, well, the data says you're right. You are attracting lots of employees doing this, but you, you're not asking the right question. It's not, are we attracting employees? The question should be, are we attracting the right employees for the person we're trying to hire? And they're not asking that question, right? So, and again, it's a very subtle difference between slapping the brand's logo on your shirt saying, I'm all in on this, you know, in a, you know, whatever. If Jim comes to me tomorrow and pays me $5 more, I'm going to put Jim's logo on my shirt. That's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about being truly 100% fully bought in to the ethics and values of why that company is in business. It's a huge differentiator. Yeah. Like whenever I do see those rash, you know, uh, you know, the, the postings and all of them come up about, you know, this is the best place to work and it's, it's all the same thing. There's part of me, I don't do it because I'm not a dick. Um, but there's part of me that wants to say, do you really believe that? Is it really the best place to work? They don't believe it, but yeah. they, but again, they, they're in a situation where they they feel like they're doing the, what they have to do in order to protect their job. And I guarantee you, there are people listening to this now that have done it. So don't feel bad if you've done it. Um, I understand. And I empathize the, with the position that the, the, that people are in. Um, but just know that if employers are, forcing you to do that under the guise of writing for the brand they've they've bastardized the message of of why this is important yeah. and the the lack of authenticity is is really a uh a combatant of writing for the brand because it takes away from that sense of, of loyalty in fact on more than one occasion from from companies that take this kind of marketing stance from people that have put out those messages their employers have asked them to put out have come to me behind the scenes in private saying, I feel so dirty doing this. I really hate working here. It is such a bad company. I'm like, well, why are you doing it? It's like, well, I got a, I got a bonus coming up. And if I do this, I'm going to look I'm like, is that really writing for the brand? <laughs> are you really representing the brand? Like, no, right? Like you, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to build a brand where people operate out of a state of fear and would be willing to put your brand uh, you know, front and center. You want people to do it because they're, again, I don't want to keep, um, I don't, I shouldn't use the, I shouldn't use the term beating a dead horse in this conversation about the cowboy coat, but I don't want to beat this topic uh, into submission here, but it, it really is important to take it back to the authenticity of being bought into the, the, the mission and goals and values of, of a company. Right. And if if we're doing these things out of a sense of loyalty, but that loyalty really is out of a sense of fear for my next paycheck or uh, my next bonus, you need to really be asking yourself the question, am I really writing for the brand or am I really writing for myself? And if it's yourself, then maybe you need to put yourself in a different situation where you truly are writing for yourself or you're writing for a different brand that you're more aligned on the values and you don't have to be having the conversations of well i'm going to do this in public because that's what my employer expects but in private i'm going to tell the real message that i really hate it here it really sucks <laughs> you know yeah so yeah and and just you know spoiler alert for folks you know most awards are fake yeah most most awards are fake um whether that's the entertainment awards, you know, movies, TV, music, um, any kind of major publication, those companies, those, uh, those organizations bought their way onto it. It's, it, it's, it's a fact, you know, it, it, most awards are, are marketing schemes. Yep. I mean, I, I think if you get me talking too much about this, I'm going to get myself in, in trouble. Um, <laughs> And uh, I've definitely had this conversation on social media as, as well, but I have seen multiple angles of this. And again, if, if you choose this as a path of a, as a company that I, I don't fault you, it, it, it is highly lucrative. 
um, because most people don't understand how these things work. And, and for most companies, they do have at least some semblance of a something behind the curtain to back that up. But the, the awards themselves um, are more often than not, not representative of reality in that you aren't really the best place to work. You know, you really aren't the top this or that. Um, it's, it's that one of two things. One, you've bought your way into it. How do I know? I've been on teams that have bought those awards for other employers in the past. I know exactly how those things work. I know what the forms look like. Uh, do you remember, uh, and this may date ourselves, do you remember in high school the your parents getting in the mail the who's who of, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, Jim, your son Jim is a top performer. And for the low, low price of three installments of $99, you'll get this great leather-bound edition where his name and and for another extra $100, his photo can be in the book as well. Like, you know, that's what it is. And I get this all the time. I think it's like, uh, I don't want to name the publication because I, I, I don't want to miss saying If I knew it, I would say it. But there's a publication that constantly hits me up saying, you've been chosen as a top web analytics uh, co- uh, pr- company and, and, and we want to highlight you in our next edition as like our time, like, and, and for the low price of blah, 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 you can be featured. And I send back every time I'm like, that's awesome that we've been noted as the best that because you're right. And I'm glad you've done your research. Um, so if you want to go ahead and write about us that we're the best, go ahead and do it, but we don't pay to be featured. We don't pay to be ranked. We don't pay to win awards, but they keep coming back because you know, it's a different sales guy the next time. So um, you know, that, that definitely happens, but there's also a political slant to it as well. And, um, I was having this conversation offline about a award ceremony that we're somewhat close to, um, where the question was asked for me, um, what was, do you think, do you think there's a political component to how these awards are, are given out? And I said, Absolutely. You know, this organization requires funding. So if you're a big donor to this organization, whether it, whether it's conscious or not, they're thinking about that and saying, you know, if we don't give this company or this person the award, are they going to pull their funding or their donations? Because we need that to carry on, right? Or, you know, if we give this award to this person, would they be more willing to give their time or their money to to our organization? So, again, I don't want to say it's nefarious. I think it's more subconscious. But if you if you tell me that they're not thinking about that, you're lying. It, it is absolutely going through their head again, subconsciously or consciously, that we have revenue on the line based on who we give these awards to. So there's both a bot paid component of it and a, and a political component to it. So, yeah. So to, to change gears a bit, um, because, you know, so far we've been focusing on the, the disingenuous part. And I want to continue that for a little bit longer and then just, you know, kind of start to wrap up around the idea of when is it genuine? When is it not just being a little lackey? Mm-hmm. Um, so another story I think of, and when I think of this is, there are brands that like, and again, it's kind of like this, this nuance to it. Um, you want people work, you know, employees that care about the brand that know the brand, Mm -hmm. but that could be taken to an extreme, just like anything where it then becomes fake. And I've, I've known brands where if you go on site and you're not using one of their products, like that's a ding against you as, as a vendor, as an employee. And I get it. Like, listen, if, if, if I'm, if I'm talking to a salesperson, you know, it, 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 I am going to have a little bit of doubt if they don't use the product, if they're not familiar with it, that, cause that does kind of give me this little thought in the back of my head. Like, do they really believe in what they're telling me or are they just here for, for a paycheck? That being said, I also think the, the the flip side of that is is where if you're only using that brand, are you doing it because you like it, or you know you actually bought. really are you yeah bought. you're bought yeah it's a it's a it's a good conversation and again I think it comes down to authenticity and and people can tell you know people have a pretty good bullshit meter that they can tell like is this is this gym being like 
sleazy cheesy and he's got the 33 six logo plastered all over the place or is like he like truly bought in and he cares like you can't fake it right like you may think you can but people see right through it and on the car on the car discussion um it's actually an interesting conversation so i bought um i bought a mini cooper for my daughter several years ago and the sales guy the mini cooper dealership noticed my jeep out in the parking lot and like he just kept asking questions and talking about it and and then like he told me about his jeep and he's like let's go take a look at it i have it out back and he's showing me his jeep and he's like here's why i do it i like it and here's what i you know here's what i love about the mini coopers but here's why i drive a jeep and i'm like this guy is a hundred percent authentic like he's not the like sleazy car salesperson that i'm used to like this guy is real and authentic And, you know, I could have dinged him for not driving a Mini Cooper, but I wanted to buy a car from him because he was real and authentic and he was still writing for the brand, right? Like he was still there giving me the pros and cons and why this is a great car for, you know, my, my daughter and why I should buy it and what I should be worried about. And I trusted him because he was so informed about his Jeep and he knew about my Jeep and, and he was willing to be authentic about that conversation. Yeah, he did. He didn't lie to you. Like if you were yeah. to ask him, "Well, what do you drive?" Well, well Mini Cooper, of course. You know, he didn't yeah. play that game with you. No, nope. no. Nope. And you know, we see this. We see this a lot in in this. And it's not. It's not specific to this industry, but it's what we're so closely um, attached to. We we get the opportunity to to see it, and and <laughs> it's so. Uh, it's so entertaining to me every time I have a conversation with a prospect and they say, well, we, you know, we'd like you to do X, Y, and Z. I'm like, we don't do that. I'm like, we can do this really well, but we don't do X, Y, and Z. We're not experts. They're like, they're, they're, they're cut off guard. Like what? Like every other agency we've talked to can do all these things. And we know they're not telling the truth, but we expected you to say that as well. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Right. And I don't expect our employees to do that either. Um, Writing for the brand is not again, being inauthentic and just doing things to, you know, get the next sale or do what you think the the boss wants you to do. The boss wants you to be authentic. And when you're authentic, that, that pays off. Um, and, and again, it's, it's the authenticity of that conversation, the alignment with values that is much more in alignment with writing for the brand than just being a bot cheerleader. Because that inauthenticity, when people know it's like, oh, Jim's just pitching this because they're paying him and he gets a bonus behind it. It's it's so much different when, you, and you know this, you've had conversations with our, our customers. And one of the things that we're really adamant about is taking no money from any vendor. And, and we do that because when we recommend a service or a product to one of our customers, We want them to trust that we have their best interest in mind and not that we're getting a kickback for it. Right. And I think when you have those conversations and you go to one of our customers and say, you know, I really like this product or I really like this service from this other company, they trust you because you're, you're authentic. You know, if, if you, if you had the inauthentic writing for the brand of, well, I like this and and you don't tell them, but you know, you're getting a kickback because that vendor is going to send you a $500 check for sending them a referral. Again, people see through it. You know, it's, it's hard to fake that authenticity of truly believing in something and being in alignment with something um, and pitching something because there's something that, you know, you're getting a kickback for. Um, uh, So again, like we, we keep coming back to this concept of authenticity, but I think without that, you know, writing for the brand becomes meaningless. You're just, you're just a hired, you're just a hired character. Right. And, and, and your, your, your allegiance and loyalty is up for the highest bidder. And that's gotta be a scary place for employees or employers to be right. If that, I know that Jim is only into the 33 sticks brand. Jim is only buying into the concept because we're the highest bidder. I would lose sleep at night because there's always someone that's willing to come along and bid a dollar more. And it's like, is that the world I have to live in that, you know, that, that loyalty to the purpose is, can be bought so easily. That's not what I want to build. Yeah. So 
we're talking about being genuine and authentic. We've we've given examples, very clear, easy examples of when it's not. How can you be authentic? And how can you do it in a genuine manner? So again, or what I, are some of the characteristics of, of that kind of behavior? So I, I, I think there are a couple of things. One, just being human, you know, um, I, again, I think people are a really good judge of is Jim talking to me as two people talking or is Jim talking to me as this uh, character that his employer is asking him to play to make a sale? Uh, people can see through that. So being more humanistic generally is a good indicator. Um, and, and again, I'm going to come back to alignment with co the core values and purpose of, of a company, whether, and, and when you do that, you don't even have to think about it. Right. So if, if, if Jim, if you're at another company and let's say you're hire, hired in as a sales role, um, and you're going out and you're pitching the services for, for that company, if, if there's not an alignment on their purpose, on their, their ethics and their goals, it's going to be really hard for you to figure out what role to play. And, and people are going to see through that, right? Because they're going to see that you're struggling to act a part. But when you don't have to act and you're comfortable in your own skin to just be yourselves, people understand that. And they're like, this is real. This is authentic. And again, it, it may be hard to quantify. It may be hard to say, you know, this or that. I can tell from this or that aspect that Jim is being authentic, but people know it when they see it, right? You know it when you see it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I mean, I love, I love the topic and I, and I think it's, it seems so simple on the surface, but it's so incredibly complex when you start digging into it. And, and I think that it's such a misunderstood topic for, so many companies and managers and, and employees where the concept of being loyal to the brand is about just being the cheerleader that the brand wants you to be. And that is so far from the truth. It's, it's loyalty to the cause loyalty yes. to the mission. Yeah. It, it's loyalty to the craft. Yeah. Because if you want to genuinely care about the company that you work for, and tell everybody you care about it, but you know, behind the scenes, they're cutting corners that it's not a quality experience. It's not a quality product. That's not being authentic. You know, that yeah. that's not actually riding for the brand. And, and, and again, you know, people just see through it. You know, you have to give people more credit than you're giving them because people, people can see it. And I see it all the time. I see it all the time on social media come work for my company. We're hiring. It's the greatest company in the world. I'm like, that person hates their job. They yes. literally hate being there. You know, why would I, why, you know, I, you, you hate being there. I mean, people can see through it. And so, um, companies and managers that are putting that pressure and expectation on their, their teams to quote, ride for the brand from a blind allegiance standpoint are missing the true opportunities. And that is to align their people with their cause. Once they do that, you don't have to pressure anybody. They're going to want to do it. Right. Like I don't, I don't tell anybody like we, so we, we had a, a new job posting go up. I didn't tell anybody. Here's a, here's a copy paste, go throw the, go share the go. I didn't say anything said, I said, here's, here's the new job opening we have. That's it. Right. If you have people that are behind the cause and are passionate about what you're wanting to do, they're going to do everything to, to make the brand successful and be loyal and ride hard for that brand. It has nothing to do with me saying, okay, here's what you're going to do. And here's how you're going to say it. No, none of that. Right. Like I don't have to tell anybody to do it. And that, yeah. that to me is the magic. Yeah. So we're going to wrap up for today, um, but we're going to continue this topic. I want to dive into a few aspects of it because I want to talk about loyalty. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we, we've talked about, you know, we really focused on the authentic, uh, authenticity piece today, but I want to talk about loyalty. What does it mean to be loyal, um, from, from multiple perspectives? So we're going to continue there. Okay, I don't want to give one. too much. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away. Mm -hmm. So we'll pick up with that one. And there's a few other, other aspects of it, but, um, like I said, to kick this off reading, you know, about the code of the West or the, the code of the cowboy, 
don't know how much is romanticized and don't know how much is accurate. That being said, you can discard those questions or doubts because when you read through some of these concepts, they're, they're, they're great things to, to live by. Agreed. Writing for the brand, caring about your craft, Agreed. caring about those who are riding with you. Yeah. Um, you know, like a promise made is, is, is a promise kept. I mean, yep. that, 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 that's accurate for, for any part of life, whether that's work, whether that's your family life, whatever. Yes. That, that is, you know, that, that is good. And I, I do like the other one, like, you know, you know, about, about being for sale. Yep. Some, not everything. Some, there are some things that just aren't for sale. Yeah. So cool. We'll wrap up there today and uh, we'll catch everybody later. All right. Thanks, Jim. See ya. Bye.